Since our last update, the global environment has changed significantly with the outbreak of COVID-19. The fast changing nature and different stages of the pandemic across the globe has increased uncertainty. So our on the ground intelligence is now even more important than ever. As many parts of the world remain in lockdown, I'm joined today by five colleagues, four from their home offices in New York, Indiana, London and Paris, and one from our newly reopened office in Hong Kong. They will share their thoughts on the impact of the pandemic, on global investment markets, on retail markets, on the outlook in Asia, including some emerging green shoots in China, about market re-entry strategies for corporate occupiers, and at the longer term structural trends relating to urbanisation, technology and sustainability. In the first quarter globally, we saw direct investment activity drop off by 5%. In the Asia Pacific region, we saw volumes decrease by 26%. And in markets like China and Singapore, we saw a drop off of investment in excess of 60%. In Europe and the US, activity really coming into 2020, as well as in the first months of the year, led to a, a pretty strong first quarter and we'll see the impact of the pandemic more so in investment activity when we look into the the months ahead in the first quarter we saw continued strength in investment into the industrial sector we also are seeing sustained interest in the multifamily space Similarly, we're seeing a focus on certain profiles of healthcare assets and data center assets. We expect those asset classes to remain a target and to see increasing levels of capital flows given the defensive qualities that they present for portfolios. We are paying very close attention to the debt markets as we believe that the stabilization of the credit markets and the debt markets will be a critical enabling factor in the movement towards a normalization of capital flows. But as we look out at the universe and we think about the role that real estate has, particularly for globally diversified portfolios, we've continued to see the shift in allocations towards real estate. And as we look to the medium to long term, we see no reason for that trend to reverse. For most retailers, the COVID-19 crisis is the toughest challenge they've ever had to face. Many retailers are gonna come out of this crisis with hard-won expertise in omni-channel retail. The stores that had been ramping up their omni-channel before are now really glad that they did. Retailers are seeing unprecedented growth in their digital channels. Meanwhile, restaurants have had to become experts in packaging and marketing of their food for pickup and delivery. Unfortunately, most restaurants are not seeing off-premise sales make up for lost dining room sales supermarkets are struggling with unexpected demand surges for certain items. That's because their just-in-time supply chains are still adapting to these unprecedented times. In order to survive and thrive through these difficult times, retailers are going to display resilience and flexibility on e-commerce sites, in their stores, and in their warehousing and distribution. Mainland China, which was initially the most impacted by the outbreak, is now showing some signs of returning to normality. Here in Hong Kong, we're already returning to offices, albeit in split team structures for now. In Shanghai, our colleagues are already fully back in offices. Indeed, across the mainland, nearly all workspaces and shops have now reopened. We're in the early stages of recovery, However, some cautious optimism is following the relaxation of the lockdown. Across the globe, countries are now looking to China to determine if there's anything that can be learned.
During the pandemic, some areas of the economy have remained strong and perform well. For example, the digital economy, that's data centers, cloud computing and AI. These have all weathered the storm well. Insurance awareness has spiked. We've seen a rise in occupier demand for offices, with wellness and preparedness likely to remain in focus. Similarly, in healthcare, that's healthcare services, pharmaceutical, medical equipment, we expect to see a growing spend in health and well-being. Thermal imaging cameras to monitor people entering buildings have already been adopted in many offices, and we expect to see more digital monitoring going forwards. We're already hearing of some landlords and occupiers talking about the implementation of UV sterilisation. And the challenges in retail have spurned tech innovation. Retailers are developing strategies that go well beyond complementing offline. A growing number of retailers and F&B operators are collaborating with third-party platforms for delivery. And retailers and landlords are increasingly utilising social media to build online communities that will enhance sales and retain customers. Indeed, we've seen a growing prominence in online streaming to sell products. As many corporates are now planning their re-entry strategies elsewhere and reimagining what might be a new normal, one focus we did see here was in building trust with staff as they return to work and putting people, technology and wellness at the heart of this. So what does it take to re-enter facilities we closed weeks ago, bring people back to work and return to a stable business activity? Now there are three key priorities. The first one is the workforce. Now we look at eligibility to return to work and priorities for re-entry, but also mental health support, social and physical distancing protocols. The second priority is around asset and people protection. Reinforce hygiene and cleaning measures, limit control and access to site. And finally, it's about work style adaptation. Changing protocols and workspace design are an imperative. We need to reduce workplace density and rethink movement. The redesign of the working environment to meet social and physical distancing standards is also a priority. Now, healthy building will be an imperative, not an option. The investment around prop tech will be significant and will dramatically increase. Technology to enable efficient remote working will be critical to maintain high productivity level. Workplace design changes will also be essential to provide a safe and yet a collaborative environment. Our sense is that the pandemic is unlikely to slow the long-term trend. The inherent attraction of cities in terms of employment opportunities and quality of life will likely counterbalance any short-term concerns about higher disease transmission risks in urban settings. But what it will do is prompt a rethink in urban design and urban management. We believe the pandemic is likely to increase the imperative for our cities to truly go digital through technology to track health and mobility. PropTech will certainly come of age. Health concerns could force the redesign of buildings and of places so that social distancing can be turned on or off without significant disruption. And the greater awareness of the fragility of our society and environment will mean that cities will double down on sustainability and zero carbon initiatives. COVID-19 has exposed how many of our cities are simply unprepared and under-equipped for shocks. City governance will come to the fore and successful cities will be measured increasingly by their readiness, resilience and responsibility. Music